So today we're gonna to talk about rivet guns and some of the options that are available today. So today I wanted to talk about rivet guns. Um, I've got three different rivet guns now, and uh, these are, for those of you who aren't building a sling TSI, uh, are for pulled rivets. And pulled rivets are different, different from driven rivets and that when you put it in the hole, you pull the stem out. So basically the rivet gun has a claw that grabs this stem and pulls it out. And when it pulls it out, it pulls this little uh, bead at the end of the, the stem into the rivet and makes it expand out, which is what grabs the metal and holds it together. So uh, some people, these are pulled rivets, blind rivets, People hear them as pop rivets. I think that was a brand name from many years ago, but people still um, call these pop rivets. Um, these are aircraft grade, expensive. I think they're from Germany, so they're uh, high quality. Uh, but it's a different style than uh, the driven rivets that have been used in some other aircraft. Uh, I think these are much easier, but there's a different set of tools and techniques for, for using these. So when I started my build just five, six weeks ago, I had this tool. And this is a Milwaukee uh, M12 rivet gun. And it's battery operated. And uh, it, uh, I bought it from another builder who uh, stopped building. And uh, I bought it with all his tools. And uh, I was using it for the first part of my build. But... Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's got a lot of corrosion on it. And uh, I bought it from a guy who lives on the coast. And it was, in a, it was in a storage shed near the coast. And I think it just got some corrosion on it uh, before it came into my possession. Um, it worked okay at first. Um, but over time, as I used it more and more, it continued to jam to the point where it was jamming every single rivet. And I would have to take the whole thing apart to get the, uh, the stem of the rivet out. Uh, I don't think that's a function of this particular gun as much as it's a function of it. This one just has a lot of corrosion on it. So I made a decision instead of buying a lot of parts to rebuild this rivet gun, I would buy a new rivet gun. Uh, this is a ProSet XT2 um, by Pop Abdel Stanley. It has a bunch of names. I'll uh, I'll show a, a link of the box and uh, a, a link to buy it, um, just so you can kind of see the specs and everything on the screen. Uh, unfortunately, this one, when I ordered it, was gonna take a week or so to get to me, but I wanted to build all weekend last weekend. So I went to Harbor Freight, my good friend Harbor Freight, and I bought the Harbor Freight Special. It's uh, 40-ish dollars, and uh, it's the most basic rivet puller, rivet gun you can buy. Um, it's air-powered, as is this one, and uh, this one is the bare minimum. Um, it's not great. It did function. It did what I needed to do to get me through the weekend, uh, and it didn't jam every single rivet like this one had gotten to the point with. Uh, but I got this new tool and I wanted to show you how this one works compared to this one and this one. Uh, they're a little different. Uh, the speeds are a little different. Um, this I think retails, the Milwaukee retails between 250 and 300. Again, I'll show a link and, um, a price, uh, on the screen. Uh, the Harbor Freight one, I think it was 45 or 47 it was less than $50 as a backup as something I can use if my primary goes down to get me through a part that I want to finish I figured it was a good backup for 50 bucks um, this gun is a lot more expensive um, it's a uh, I think it was eight hundred and seventy dollars or so I had to buy an extra tip and I bought an air hose, uh, also in addition to the base gun. So all told, maybe more 900-ish. Uh, I bought this from a company called Three Day Tool. 
Uh, you can also find them on Amazon and eBay. Uh, Evan of uh, Sling Builder fame um, has done a video on this one. Uh, he really liked it. Um, when I called Three Day Tool, uh, I told him what I was doing, um, and I had told him that I was had been recommended this particular gun, and uh, they agreed that was a great one for what I was going to be doing. Uh, we talked for a little while, a gentleman by the name of Doug with Three Day Tool. I'll put that information in the description as well. Uh, he got me hooked up, very nice, very knowledgeable about the tool, and uh, got it shipped to me, and I think it took about five or six days. So um, I've only pulled a few rivets with this. I've got a part set up. I'm gonna reposition the camera and I'm working on a wing rib. This is wing rib number one for the right wing. And I've just put a stiffener on there. It's the first part I'm gonna pull and I've got it clecoed together. And I'm gonna pull a couple rivets with each of these guns and see if I can get some footage and just kind of show you the difference between them. So I wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, Custom Aircraft Builders. Uh, I forgot to mention, they're actually the one that uh, put me on to 3-Day Tool. Uh, he did a video, uh, and I can't remember the gentleman's name, but it's uh, Custom Aircraft Builders. I believe they're in New York, and they're a, uh, a sling build assist center. Um, but he, uh, he did a video you can watch. Um, he talked about a couple of different rivet guns that they've had experience with. Uh, so you can watch that one as well. And then if you go back a, a year or two, uh, Evan did a video on his page um, about rivet guns as well, where he talked about some of the same stuff. So uh, all of those uh, are similar topics to me. I don't think anybody was using the Milwaukee. So I wanted to kind of show this. I've seen that several builders are using this. So I wanted to kind of show everybody how it worked. Um, there's a... Uh, a rivet attachment uh, sort of uh, it's like a little basket that goes on to the back that holds the rivet stems mine don't pop out back here so it was kind of pointless having it I end up having to pull the rivets out the front so I took it off because it just kind of gets in the way uh, but let me uh, see if you can see what I'm doing here I'm gonna pull a couple of rivets with the Milwaukee uh, if it won't jam maybe just pulling one So I was able to pull it out the front. So with this one, it, it won't go out the back. So what you're normally supposed to do is just tilt it and then the rivet would fall out the back or fall into the little catch container that's attached to the back here. Uh, mine won't do that. Uh, so anyway, that's the Milwaukee. You can kind of hear it's battery powered. So it, uh, it, it has sort of a cycle where it's... Uh, it's grabbing it, it's pulling it back, and then it's releasing and resetting. So the other two are, are air-powered or pneumatic. Um, I'll do the Harbor Freight gun first. Um, the, this one has a, a unique system that I'll show as well, um, but uh, let me get the air hose. So again, uh, hopefully you can see this. Uh, and then the rivet will fall out. If you tilt it to the back, it'll fall out the back, but it falls out either way. It doesn't shoot out uh, on this gun. Uh, it also has a catch basin that I took off uh, because they just fall out either way. Uh, as you might have noticed, uh, it's a little slow and it almost didn't pull it. I just don't think it quite has enough power um, to do the larger four and 4.8 rivets. Um, in fact, sometimes you have to sort of double double do <laughs> the 4.8 millimeter rivets with this gun because it just doesn't quite have enough power to do those bigger rivets. And then the stem just sort of falls out. So let me pull out a couple of Clecos and uh, I'll put in a couple more rivets and we'll do, I don't know if you can see, this is what we're attaching. It's just a, uh, a stiffener. So I'm gonna change out my air pressure. So the nice thing about 
this hose is it just allows you to kind of keep your, your bigger, fatter hose down on the floor. Let me show you the air. Um, so when you want to use it, you turn on the air going to the hose here, and it'll start making a lot of noise. Hopefully you'll hear me over the air. But what it is is the air creates a suction that will suck the stem out and, and put it into the catch container. You can see that it sucked it back up in there. I'll turn this off. It sucked it back up in there and pulled it out. So as you can see, it, it worked well. Um, they the, the stems go back up into the catch without you having to tilt it back or pull it out like on the Milwaukee. That that's not how you're supposed to do it on the Milwaukee. It's just what mine does because it's it's got some corrosion and stuff inside the mechanics of the. Uh, the, the rivet puller mechanism. So anyway, that's kind of a, a quick overview. And uh, I'll show you, I don't know if you can see this, but you can see uh, what the end result is. It fattens, it fattens out the, uh, the rivet. I'll throw one more in here so you can see the difference. So if you can see that, you can see that's where they go in and then it flattens them out and fattens them out uh, so it holds the metal together. So uh, that's the overview. Um, a couple of things. Uh, the air hose is nice. It's not a necessity, but it keeps you from having to have a hinge point and having a larger, uh, some sort of a, a coiled air hose up closer to the gun. It, it allows you to have this very flexible, soft rubber, and it, it kind of just gets this out of the way. I have, on, attached to this, I also have a larger uh, air, air line. Uh, a tip for this gun that uh, Doug at 3 Day Tools told me is absolutely positively never give it more than 90 pounds of pressure. Uh, he said if you if you go if you if you use your full compressor at 150 or 200 pounds uh, And you don't regulate it down You're gonna blow out the seals in the gun and you're gonna be sending it back to him for a rebuild uh, So keep your pressure at or slightly below 90 pounds. Uh, I think I'm at about 80 uh, and then uh, When you uh, this has a little disconnect because when this tool is working uh you have to be, the air continuously moves to pull the rivet through and into the catch container. So that's a little different than, uh, than this gun that doesn't have that. It's just gravity. Uh, you either have to tilt it back and let it go into the little catch, catch box or just let it fall out the front. The catch box has a big slit in it um, and they all fall out anyway. So I just usually, with this one, I've just been letting them fall out the front. Uh, so... With this gun, you end up with uh, rivet stems all over the place. Again, I don't want to uh, I don't want to disparage this particular one. I think mine, the Milwaukee, is just mine is just in bad condition. Uh, again, I was going to have to spend some money to get a parts kit to kind of rebuild it, and so I just let it go, and I and I decided to invest in the uh, the Proset XT2. So so far, I'm I'm real happy with it. It's working good, and. Uh, We'll see where we go.